Tina. Lots of experience in that team and uh, a powerful pack of forwards, particularly that front row. Great scrummers they are, the Argentinians. Italy, well, disappointing tournament for them, but lots to play for today in terms of restoring the pride of the Azzurri. The Australians spoke about that pack of forwards. Julian Gardner at the back, who played four internationals for Australia, and uh, the scrumming ability of the Italians was widely praised by Australia. Placements for today to De Castillos on the Argentinian side. And the referee today for today's encounter is Clayton Thomas from Wales and he'll be supported by another Welshman in Derek Bevan who's in his third Rugby World Cup and Kofi Degni Serafin from Côte d'Ivoire, the Ivory Coast, commonly known as KD in his country. crowd have packed in here just at a very late stage when we arrived some two hours ago there were not that many people in the ground but great support for these two nations and one certainly hopes that uh, we'll see an attractive game of rugby Tony because uh, both these teams are capable of playing good attractive running constructive rugby yes indeed both sides have proved in the rugby world cup 95 that uh, given the opportunity they do take their chances they counter attack very well but one of the things with this Argentinian side, they uh, retain the ball very well, but those final passes, those try-scoring opportunities just go begging. And they haven't been able to convert their opportunities, and they have had numerous ones at that into points. So they'll be looking for a marked improvement this afternoon. Well, the finishing touches are what needed as Sile starts with a deep kick that might go all the way out. Well, not a good start for Argentina. A little bit of misjudgment possibly of the win there from Sile. Sile coming across to South Africa as a replacement in the Argentine side and that was something of great surprise to the South Africans that he was not a first choice after performing so well against them last year. Skamov is Troncon and then Diego Dominguez. That's a big hoist from Bacardi. Very solid Jurado at the back. Well, they're going to come back for a penalty for Argentina being in an offside position. Gerardo looks a bit stunned. It had nothing to do with him. And uh, this is virtually on the halfway line. And kicking into that wind is not going to be an easy job for Dominguez. He's thinking about going for poles. And yes, he is. Well, this is going to be an enormous kick on a day like today. Conditions are firm underfoot. So uh, he won't have any problems with footholds. Two uh, naughty errors there from the Argentinian side as they started off the match. Firstly going into touch on the full and then conceding a penalty like that. Uh, really at this level they shouldn't be forcing those penalties. Well that's an excellent effort that and that's well over there from Dominguez. Now if he's going to kick them over into the wind from that sort of distance, Argentine had better beware. Italian support substantial here today in East London. That's once again that kick's gone too far from Argentina. The choice for Italy, Massimo Catita says we'll come back to the halfway line for a scrum. They have options. Two powerful packs of forwards. Argentina outweighing the Italians. Good solid technique, as we've always come to know from Argentina. Both packs are obliged to scrum straight. Dominguez with a little switch pass, and then a good run through that ball out to Vacari. Solid start for Italy in this match. Argentina come away with it, that's Sile. 
Well, there was a forward pass there, and uh, the Italians hurrying the Argentine into mistakes. Yes, certainly the uh, Italian side seems to be playing with a lot more urgency. They cut the Argentinian back line off right, right at source there, and uh, Silly had no opportunity to go anywhere but look for the touchline. Well, the ball put under the feet of hooker Carlo Ulandi there from uh, Alessandro Troncon, the Italian scrum half. You don't often see that in today's uh, rugby, and Sile just deciding uh, to kick quickly, didn't really set his sights. Long, and that's a good punt across the field back for Gerardo and uh, Diego Cuesta Silva. Well, it just shows that uh, if you can kick accurately and uh, with good timing, the wind makes very little difference to your performance. Federico Mendez with a throw in for Argentina. Well, there'll be a hold up here for injury because down on the far side, looks like uh, one of the Italians. That's Franco Properzi, who uh, was just down for a while, but he's back on his feet. Lots of experience in the front row. He's a big man, is uh, Franco Properzi. Useful support in the lineouts, of course, for Pedroni and Giacari. But it's Mendes who'll probably be looking for Yanez in the front. Doesn't find him. Back to Troncon. Good play by the Italians, trying to get over that advantage line. Troncon again back coming into Francescato. This is great running by the Italian side. Just look at the support, but there's no one on the far side. Troncon, was that a knock-on? Well, back they'll come for the scrum. Exciting moments there from Italy again. They're playing with such urgency, looking to move the ball, looking for space. And indeed, as we saw that fine break through the middle there by Bordon, and uh, he made a very useful break and gave the useful support to his backup. Well, it was good to see Francescato coming off his right foot. Well, the penalty is given for collapsing the scrum. That was given against uh, Massimo Catita. Sile choosing to go with the win because that's the direction, but that's not a very good kick from him. Taken by Vicari. Back inside to Bordon. Good play there from Zogolon. Well, Italy are getting a great surplus of ball here. Fine bounce for them. Cuesta Silva and then Gerardo. The Argentines are there in greater numbers. But... Uh, Hurried into a knock-on and a real sense of urgency from Italy. Well, that's the first time we've seen the Argentine side really get together. They took out the Italian men, just preventing that ball from coming out. And unfortunately, at the crucial time, little knock-on, and those are uh, really unforced errors. Pick up at the back from uh, Gardner. Then Katita takes back in again. I want to suck the Argentine in. Good running by Dominguez. He swept a foot is Dominguez. Now that could be a penalty for a late charge. Little man Dominguez puts up a super little chip looking for space. And uh, you can just see that he runs into a brick wall there and ends up uh, flat on his behind. The Argentine maybe have a score to settle with this man. Argentine by birth, but now domiciled in Italy. Really an excellent kicker with a, a very high strike rate does Dominguez have. absolutely waste no time it'll swing away that one and the referee has given it over well from our view that looked like it didn't go over we'll leave that judgment to you well 
Well, Gavin, you can just see the little smile on his face. There's uh, quite unbelievingly, he seems to think that it may well have missed. But he's not complaining. They'll take the extra three points, and that takes Italy into a 6-0 lead. Start coming there from Arbizu, who's played fly half during Rugby World Cup as well. Dominguez with the relief for Italy. But that real sense of urgency coming from the Italians might have something to do with the fact that they're playing into the wind and important that they establish some sort of platform to turn around at halftime. Krishel on to Noriega. Penalty will go Italy's way if there is no advantage. Clayton Thomas just waiting for the release, but it comes on the other side. Italy went over that ruck ball and uh, played the ball off their feet. So we'll see now Jose Sile, who's also a very good goal kicker. Well, in fact, he's not uh, going for poles. And this is an interesting choice by him. They've chosen to rather try and get a line out close to the Italian line. They have the strength of uh, Herman Yanez in the front of the line out. And that's a very positive move. More importantly for Argentina, that's uh, Sile's third attempt at touch from a penalty, and he's uh, finally managed to get it, and that gives them the throw in at the line out. A huge advantage. Well, will it be Yanez in the front or Spoleta in the middle? Yanez is the taker. Two powerful packs of forwards. The way they come with it. Good play there by uh, Hooker Mendez. This could well be a try to Argentina. Well, a positive reward for positive play. Well, that try has gone to Rolando Martin. And uh, he, in many ways, has been one of the stars of the Rugby World Cup 95 for Argentina. Very lively player. Always the man, certainly on the Argentinian side, the first man to the point of breakdown. Well, the try initially coming from a super jump at the front of the line-out by German Yanis. And just look here as he loose forwards, both of them get in behind each other, and uh, eventually it's Rolando Martin. And he'll be delighted that that try. He's uh, certainly been the live wire of this Argentinian side, always looking for work, very good driver. And uh, as you can see there, with great support from his number eight, Jose Santa Marina. That's Sile with the conversion. That's going to swing away. Well, six points to five then. Uh, Italy lead Argentina, and deservedly so. 18 minutes gone. Well, it says 12 minutes on the screen, and uh, the scoreboard shows 18. We'll believe the 12. Low kick from Dominguez. It was good play that by Christian Veal. He didn't try and pick it up, just stopped it with a foot. Yes. Of course, both these nations have a great passion for soccer, and the ball-playing abilities are well known of both teams. That's a huge punt across the field, but it's gone too far there from uh, the Italian fullback Troiani. Just looking up at the flags on the uh, above the scoreboard here, you can see that the wind has changed a little bit. It's virtually blowing across the field away from us towards that open grandstand, and that's why we've seen a number of those kicks just drift a little wider than possibly anticipated by the kicker. Big jump by Pedro Spoleta for Argentina. They're struggling to get momentum going in those driving malls. Plenty of Italian resistance. They get the release. But that's a wild pass from them, and back foot is Christian Veal. Better ball for them, Rolanda Martin. Bridging that uh, advantage line is important for them. That's a thumping tackle. Back in it goes Veal, but a little bit of over-elaboration from uh, Argentina. Once again, Martin takes it on. Can they now stretch it wide? Sile going in short, but well tackled by Dominguez. Well, the advantage was not there for Argentina. 
after Italy had been caught in an offside position. Once again, uh, Silay choosing to go for the line-out throw. Of course, having the penalty means that you have the throw-in as well. And uh, Silo would have absolutely no problem getting the distance with a penalty. But they've decided to take on the Azuri with uh, the try line in sight. <laughs> Mendes, he's such an accurate thrower in. And with Yanez in the front, he's an explosive jumper. <laughs> Ball coming, bobbing back and forth in the line-out. Spoleda and Jose Santa Marina in the thick of things. Well, uh, Argentina, they're unfortunately obstructing as the ball carrier had a man in front of him. Just a little bit of over-elaboration one feels from them. That's Martin Tiran that goes back. He taps it inside to Gerardo. Well, indecisiveness from Argentina. Well, it's not often we see indecisive play from that man, Gerardo. He normally makes very good, decisive breaks from the back there. And he was uh, almost lulled into a false sense of security there. He had the kick in his mind, and he had Martin Tarant calling for the pass on his inside. That's Matias Corral playing at loose head prop for Argentina and both uh, sets of front row forwards need to keep their shoulders above their hips when they're scrubbing. Italy do well to disrupt that scrum of Argentina, turn them towards the touchline but it's gone through the 90 degrees. Hard to get quality ball from a scrum which is angled towards the touchline. Well, Matthias Corral and Franco Properzi are spoken to by the referee. Quick pass to Sile. This is not a good attacking platform for Argentina, but Salvat comes through beautifully. Now, can he switch on? Couldn't find early support. Back is Martin. Argentina doing well. They've got some numbers uh, joining that ruck now. And then Federico Mendes taken on by Santa Marina. Christian Ville. Good ball for them. Did that not come off an Italian leg? That's Troiani that was scragged. It's a long kick that from uh, Paolo Vaccari. Well, Argentina certainly coming back into this match and showing there that their ball retention skills are proving to be the vital component in their game this afternoon. They uh, seem to be a lot more effective when they stay on their feet in the mall. And in going to ground, we've seen them knock on a little bit and uh, a little bit of poor service coming from their little scrum off their crack shelf. Well, both the, both the teams have in their back line, that's Yanez, have in their back line players that are playing what would we would assume would be out of position. I mean, Salvat is a full back at center. And in the Italian side, many of the backs play in different positions. But it shows the versatility of the players. That message is very clear from Clayton Thomas of Wales. Diego Dominguez gets the message from his team. This is what they want. Well, back it goes into the 22. And that's a massive punt that from Luigi Troani. Six points to five then. Italy lead against Argentina in this bottom of Pool B match. Very few balls have been thrown onto Pedro Spoleda during Rugby World Cup. It's mainly been Yanez in the front, but Italy have disrupted the line-out ball of the Argentine. 
It's a good kick that from Diego Dominguez. He's a lovely footballer, isn't he, Tony? Well, he certainly is. He's a player that uh, has a lot of experience and obviously that rubs off on his Italian teammates and he's been able to pepper the ball in both corners and keep his forwards going forward, which is important. One senses a real sense of urgency in the Italian backline, the desire to run with the ball. We saw that early in the match. There hasn't been enough quality ball for them to build on that. Sile. Carlo Olandi, the Italian hooker. Well, that was a good take by Italy, but they closed the gap in the line out too quickly. So, free kick in Argentina's way. It's amazing that Sile has not chosen to. Uh, Look for greater distance, having the wind uh, at his back, but uh, probably not wanting to sacrifice accuracy for distance. And uh, one would have thought that he might have looked to kick towards the corner flag. Uh, I think you've uh, hit it on the head there, Gavin. I don't think that Argentina have utilized the wind sufficiently and played in the Italian half enough. And those big kicks downfield will certainly put pressure on the Italians. That was the dummy there from Crescil and then going back to the forwards. They're really looking to take Italy on with their forwards. Rolando Martin. Well, Martin ran into his own player there, so that's the scrum down. Alessandro Troncon for Italy with a put-in. There's certainly a lot of problems on the far side there with Matthias Corral of Argentina and Franco Paperti at the tight head for Italy. That's better ball for Italy. Troncon. A pass on the inside to Zoglon. Just the lack of finishing from both teams on occasions and that's good running there by the big uh, Stefano Bordon. This is a good chance for Italy, and then Sebastian Salvat is the saviour for Argentina. Well, the Italians are coming at Argentina in numbers, but possibly just lacking the finishing touches and haven't really had the quality ball that they want. Argentina on the other side seemingly getting a lot of ball, but not playing in the Italian half of the field. Well, in this Rugby World Cup tournament, Argentina have already proved that they have a solid defence. They've... Uh pulled off some magnificent tackles in the games we've seen from them but uh, Italy just not throwing everything at them in the right direction they seem to be spreading the ball a little wide and drifting on it Padroni in the front against Yanez this is a long kick downfield that's going to be an excellent kick that uh, from Rodrigo Crescel of Argentina very tight angle just managed to get it to bounce in field and that's what's been lacking from his halfback partner, Jose Sile. <laughs> Carlo Olandi with a throw in. Pedroni in the front for Italy. He's the jumper. These line-outs certainly proving to be a little messy today. We've seen some very good ball taken by German Yanis up the front there. But other than that, the, uh, the referees penalised harshly and a lot of knock-ons coming. Dominguez with a hoist. Back foot is Cuesta Silva. Now Gerardo is with him, but he doesn't look for the switch. That's not a good kick from him. That's little Martin Tiran, the shortest man on the field, going off there on the left wing. 
he will be remembered uh, as the man from Tukaman. Quite at home playing on the left or the right wing. The Italian scrum has stood well in this match. The Australians rate their scrum very highly. And of course the famous uh, Bajada technique of the Argentine is well known where they scrum and pass the ball. Well, that man in picture there, Dominguez, uh, he's certainly proving to have an outstanding game today. He's been putting some precision kicks deep into the Argentinian half of the field. And nice to see him playing well again. He hasn't had a good tournament. Apparently some uh, worries. His wife is due to have their first child and she's was due to have it three or four days ago. So he'll be looking forward to getting home, I'm sure. Well, 80 minutes of concentration is what the Azuri asked from him. And then he can get on the phone to his wife. Right now, there's a terrific pride at stake with these two nations. Argentina is a great source of players, 300 of them playing in Italy. And neither wants to finish at the bottom of this pool. That's the kick from Crescell. Riffy had his uh, hand up and allowed for advantage. Well, he doesn't feel there's been enough. Well, interestingly, over on the far touch line there, the touch judge put his flag up and referee there from uh, Wales, Clayton Thomas, he just indicated that play on. He didn't see the foot going into touch and uh, not often we see the referee overrule the touch judge in such close confines. That's Sile's big punt downfield. That's a really good kick from him. And that's a, from the Argentine cause it's a, a perhaps a far better option to get down into their half of the field the argentine will also be looking for something of a counter to yanez's jumping in the front because italy have disrupted it well, this time he takes well sile salvat running through there by Arbizu. argentina have numbers as polito goes through then noriega Matias Carral and Mendes, they really hunt together those uh, three front row players. He has a chance for Sile. Can he get through? Great running and then the knock on coming from Sebastian Salvat. Well, that was perhaps clever play there by uh, Maria Giorosa of uh, Italy. He knew that he was playing with advantage, so decided to take the kick to touch. Well, there we see the Argentine forwards. Just those vital passes, as we said at the beginning of the game. Those of what determined the win and loss situation for this Argentinian team in the Rugby World Cup 95. They've run the ball well at times. They've played with great guts and great courage, but just haven't managed to convert it into points. El Capitano on his back. Great servant of Argentine rugby. Played a lot of his international games at fullback today at center and such is the versatility of these two teams that they're able to field players in positions that are not always their own sebastian salvat there is up and ready to play again and uh, he's one player that seemingly sti sticks to putting the ball under his right arm playing in the center and sometimes doesn't have the opportunity to release the pass quick enough to get his forwards and backs running outside him Argentina having some problem keeping that scrum up in the front row. Well, Luigi Troiani was the uh, man that was injured. He's up on his feet. Look at the near side there with number one, Matthias Corral. Collapsing the scrum on that occasion. Italy decide to go to the back to Jacari. He's the tallest man on the field, Dominguez. They've got a big man in uh, Stefano Bordon in the midfield with Francescato. Back it comes uh, to Argentina. Now that was better play that by Sile. Well, a much better kick there from Sile, the little man who made his debut in South Africa last year at Ellis Park against the Springboks. Got off the plane that morning.
and had an outstanding match that afternoon. Really a fine young player and as you said earlier Gavin, surprising that he wasn't in the initial Argentinian touring squad and was recently flown over to join them. Argentina with the wind at their backs don't have the platform that they would want. They lead by just that solitary point, six points to five. Well, for the second time, Argentina are penalized for closing the gap too quickly in the line-out. Once again, a solid punt from Domingo, from uh, Diego Dominguez. Argentina's success started with uh, Yanez, but the quality of ball that's come out on both sides has left a lot to be desired. Control tap that time. Sile does well. Gets back to his forwards. The security of the pack of forwards is what Argentines seek always when it's needed. Martin uh, Tiran. Salvat. Well, Sebastian Salvat there, unfortunately, holding the ball on the ground. Dominguez, he wastes no time. And a solid kicker. Well, this has been a little bit of a kicking contest. Dominguez doing well from Itali Italy's side in, uh, with accurate pinpoint kicking. And Sile, well, he's been accurate, but one feels that he could have looked for more distance with the wind at his back. Short line out called, just five in on either side. Well taken there by Julian Gardner. Julian Gardner played four tests for the Wallabies and uh, his mother is an Italian. Dominguez's drop will go wide. Well, Salvat is not very happy with his decision from the referee who will go another 10 meters, saying that the Argentine back line were off sides. Well, those errors from the Argentinian side, surely their captain will call them together and say, we can't afford to uh, give away such pointless penalties. Well, Tony, the, uh, unfortunately, it was the captain that was involved on that occasion because uh, he was the guy talking to the referee and complaining about the fact that the decision had been given in the first place. Dominguez slotted that great 50-meter penalty into the wind soon after the start. This should be a bit of a doddle for him. Easy, says Dominguez. Penalty number three for him. And behind the poles there, you can see the, uh, the big crowd of youngsters enjoying the match, scurrying for that ball. And all of them want to get a hand to it. Argentina, just the solitary try from Martin. Kicking for space, and that's... Uh, Troncon's kick with some relief. Rosia Arancho is off the field at the moment, just getting some repair work done. So Italy only have six forwards, seven forwards. Yanni is in the front. Italy take well from the tap down. Referee feels they were offside. That's a good quick take by them. Then Spolida and uh, Rolindo Martin. He really is a forager, is Martin. He's everywhere where the ball is. Christian Veal looks to tidy up for Argentina. Sile. Straight down the middle of the field. This is Troioni. Argentina a little bit more urgent in their play as we uh, move towards half time here at uh, East London and certainly they'll be ruining the fact that they've had the wind with them they should have had more points on the board they've had a great deal of the possession in this first half and uh, perhaps they're looking for a bit more ball retention in the well, second half well we saw the line out statistics and once again they come away with it for the first time Gerardo comes into the line it's good better running by them 
which is excellent running and then Sile with a the take there's Martin again Salvat dragged by the Italians Mendes in a real tightly fought battle up front now comes the release pick up coming from Christian Veal can the Azuri absorb all this pressure in terms of defense Chris Schell, he's calling for the ball he's got men plenty on the outside Matthias Carral Christian Veal Well, if one fancies that penalty will go against uh, Francescato, who was lying down on the way. In fact, Bordon. A bit of tackling out there by the Italian side. They weren't going to let Argentina score a try. And uh, Argentina have elected to go for the scrum. They've proved already today that they have the more powerful of the two packs. And South Africa, as we saw last night, scored two very very good pushover tries and can we expect this from the Argentinian eight-man shove well they have the weight advantage in the scrum they have very good technique can both sides keep that scrum up that's solid that scrum is very solid important in those scrums that as Argentina get the ball put in but they just settle themselves prepare for the second push they seem to be just pushing a little earlier and getting their momentum out of balance well that's part of their technique in terms of all eight men scrumming so they just scrum straight away well that's a penalty try that has been given against Italy Jose Sile will waste no time with the conversion. Not too much debate from the Italians in respect of the awarding of that try. Safely through from Sile. Well, full credit here to uh, referee Clayton Thomas. He saw that the Argentinian were headed for the try line and it was the Italian forwards that just persisted in preventing that ball from coming out cleanly and uh, the resultant try good effort long kick from Dominguez Mr. Silva calls for it and gets it well for the second time Jerosa just with a quick throw to uh, Triani Argentina come away with it, but uh, referee is happy that Jogolan was uh, onside for Italy, although the Argentinians didn't seem to think so. time in the first half fading away then Argentina lead Italy by 12 points to nine and the Latin Americans will not be happy with their first half performance taken well at the back by Rancho for Italy once again they get quality ball with numbers on the outside quick pass on to the left wing Jarosa Good play that by Troncon. They really do well to get the ball back quickly. They always seem to have numbers in the back line, do Italy. Big shove coming from them while that mall keeps going forward. They'll be 100% happy. Good running there from uh, Petroni. A 
Well, on this occasion, it was Argentina that killed that ball at the ruck. Now, what is the choice of the Azuri? Do they kick for goal or try and take on that juggernaut pack? Well, Gavin, having seen their scrubbing this afternoon, I think that uh, one would certainly look to go for the three points. Dominguez has already proved he's a reliable goal kicker. And in saying that, we've seen a, a much better passage of play coming from the Italians, a far more focused maul. They got in behind the forwards, behind the ball, nice and low. And got some good rolling motion going. And that's the uh, that's the success of any more, getting low and getting the momentum up. Up with the best kickers in the world, Diego Dominguez. We thought he was a bit lucky with that uh, second penalty of his, which seemed to miss the right and upright, but this one certainly hasn't. Honours even, 40 minutes gone, just uh, referee's optional injury time left. Arbizu with the start. Great uh, tap down from the real Tempoli. Matias Corral. Argentina would like to score a try now, so close to half time, show greater ascendancy. Good running by them on the outside. That's Martin Tiran. Well, Martin Tiran burst off there after the whistle blew. But the Azuri were all offside. And uh, surely Jose Sile will have a kick at goal. Well, not the first time this afternoon that Clayton Thomas has uh, not let advantage go. And the Argentinians will be ruining the fact that perhaps little Martin Turan was away from his man there. He managed to shrug off uh, a little nice slap around the ear hole and was uh, herring off to the corner, la corner flag. But instead it looks to me as if they're going to settle for the opportunity to slot three points. Well, this is an important kick for Argentina to get into the lead they've not had for most of this match well that's not good not a good strike from Sile just seemed to stab it a little bit as it went past the left hand upright Dominguez deciding to go long to Cuesta Silva it's Arbizu that comes away with it, then Cuesta Silva. It was much more, much positive, more positive play from Argentina. The inspiration on that occasion coming from the right wing. But it's been the inside backs that have been a little lackadaisical for the men from South America. Wonderful period for of service to Argentine rugby from Diego Cuesta Silva, the cardiologist. Well, that's the half-time whistle then. Uh, 12 points each for Italy and Argentina. Not a great first half in terms of rugby spectacle, which we were hoping to see. But... Uh, Perhaps that'll improve in the second half. Instinct told him that something was wrong. Monday on the bill, like the sound of this one. a young child disappears. Sid would never see him again. And as night begins to fall, the six-year-old boy missing, and we don't know whether he's dead or alive. The bill, 8:35 Monday on one. It's big, it's big bacon, and it's only $2.99. 
95. Now's a great time for the delicious taste of real value. Always a great time. The Celtic Small Black 15. Has there ever been a team like it? This week, Glenn Osborne and Stephen Bashup join the squad. Collect the full 15 at participating Caltech stations now for Caltech's Small Black 15. Don't miss them. Just the way I like them. Running water is very relaxing, but not when it's ankle deep in the lounge at two o'clock in the morning. That's what Jack and Helen Cameron came back to when their home flooded, ruining their furniture and carpets. The good news is that Jack and Helen are insured with National Insurance, who are available 24 hours a day. So they got immediate emergency assistance. Now everything's back to normal. When you make a claim, the last thing you want is more problems. Phone National Insurance on 0800 808 808 and get protection you can depend on. They keep you informed every step of the way. Everything you'd expect from a top quality claim service. Phone National Insurance now on 0800 808 808 for further information and arrange for an obligation-free quote. The new Dixmith Electronics 95 annual catalogue is full of phones, faxes, mobiles, personal audio, learning toys, computers, electronics and accessories for everything. The new Dixmith Electronics 95 catalogue, out now. Aurovale Gel. For your bumps and bruises. Aurovale Gel. For sprains and strains. Aurovale Gel. Aurovale Gel. 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 Gel.
That was a good career to play from Argentina, but once again they just lack the finishing touches. Back foot is Gerardo. Punting for the corner flag. Well, Argentina making all the running in the start of the second half, but again, just showing that those vital passes, the ones that are gone a begging in this tournament for them, really have cost them. The rucks and malls there, just look at the dominance by Argentina. They haven't converted it to points, and uh, their captain will have said to them at halftime, come on, guys, we've got to get together, use the ball correctly. Tactics are good from uh, Dominguez in chasing uh, Argentina back. Message surely from George's cost has been to kick deep down into Argentina's half of the field. Well, the match just struggling to come alive as these two teams put their skills against each other. Carlo Lundi with a throw into the back. Julian Gardner. That was good take by Italy. They've got the big strong Bordon in the middle. He's really a good runner with a ball. Little flick pass on the inside. And once again, a movement comes to North after looking considerable. Well, those are the vital moments that one needs to take. The chances a few. And we've seen neither side really capitalize on the good breaks made by uh, Sebastian Salvat on the Argentinian side and Big Bordon in the Italian side. In the middle, the tap down comes from uh, Giacardi. That's the first hoist of the match in terms of an attacking up and under that we've seen from either side. But there was a knock on from Italy. Well, apart from that up and under being finally placed, it also was a little bit of a floating ball. It didn't go up and uh, roll head over heel as it came down. And those are so difficult to get underneath because they, they virtually float away from you. The wind won't be helping either. Well, Bordon was not very happy, but he's back on his feet again. Good scrum from Argentina. Kong with the put in, um, Krishal with the put in. Sile, that one just screwing off his boot. But a little bit of cat and mouse from both teams in uh, not spreading the ball wide. Italy, it's only been Italy on occasions when they've had men in numbers on the outside that they've looked to spread it wide and use Bordon as a battering ram down the middle. Once again, it goes to the back, but there was pushing from Italy in that line-out. Well, the referee is certainly penalising the line-outs harshly this afternoon. And the Rugby World Cup has shown us that... Uh, there are 101 different things that one can actually be penalised for in these lineouts, and uh, the referee just identifying there that a uh, little bit of pushing at the back. That's a great kick that from uh, Jose Sile of Argentina. Can Argentina now make something of this? They need a good jump from Yanez in the front. Watch the push coming there from Italy's Arancho, number six. Tap down from Italy. That's Noriego taking through. Matias Corral. Well, Argentina was slow to get to that ruck. And that's why it's come out on the Italian side. The forwards of Argent the Argentina time must feel very unhappy with the fact that uh, so often when they've driven through that the balls popped over out on the Italian side there's been a turnover and then it was the boot of Dominguez to chase them back well, psychologically mentally those things uh, certainly pay a heavy price for your forwards when you make all that ground up field as you said and suddenly you're 
turning your head and heading back 50 odd meters down the field still 12 points all titanic struggle between these two teams that's a good jump from Ganes. it's his first clean take for a considerable amount of time Sile. it's well taken and back to triani that's a very good kick that from Tony. Is the bounce kind to him? Taken in by Krishel. Doesn't have a very good angle, does Krishel, but he makes a very good job of that kick. Now, what do Italy do in this line-out? They're struggling to get ball to Petroni in the middle. Looked at the options of Julian Gardner at the back, which is with control tapping has worked well for them. Dominguez, that ball screws off his boot. Gerardo was well positioned from the full-back position of uh, Argentina. If we can see that... Uh, the Italians have only passed on three occasions from that man, Diego Dominguez. But on all three occasions, they were in good positions to run with the ball. Ganes takes again in the front. Lots of communication in that mall. Sile looks to spread. A long pass out there to Arbizu. And that's Trioni. Well, Trioni has uh, certainly had a more active second half than the first. Well, Gavin, as we see the lineouts being dominated by Argentina, it's surprising that Italy will almost be content at continuing to kick for touch. They have looked so much more exciting when we've seen them counter-attack in numbers and uh, was not winning the possession in the lineouts as they should be. They're on a losing battle here. Well, the penalty there given against Arancho, who was earlier penalized for pushing in the line out. Italians took out uh, Yanez on that occasion. <laughs> Argentina saying to the referee that uh, they're not very happy with that decision. In fact, it wasn't Yanez, it was Spolido. Went down like a sack of potatoes. Now, can Jose Sile reverse the fortunes of Argentina in that kicking role? Sile will need to strike the ball a little cleaner than he has been doing today. He's, as you said earlier, stabbed at the ball and almost falls off the ball, falls away from it. And as a result, gets very little power into the middle of the ball. Well, he's shown his ability in the past. He struck that well. He's got the distance, has Sile, but just past the right hand upright. Now, will Dominguez look for the long kick downfield? Choosing to go right down the middle, he finds a, a gap at back for his Sile. Sile similarly down the middle of the field. Good cat and mouse from both teams. Lots of time for Troni. That's a massive punt from him, but that won't go out. Gerardo. Well, counter-attack, Tony, can only come when you've got men back there supporting the man with the ball. And both teams seemingly content to stand in the middle as they ping-pong it to either side of the field. Good jump at the back by Italy, and then the switch pass on the inside to uh, Vaccari. That's good ball for Italy. Can they make something of this, Bordon? Argentina were in an offside position, but maybe they can make something of this. Good running on the outside now. He has an interesting chance for Italy. Who's going to get there first? 
The try has gone to Paolo Vicari. It was good play by him, lovely skills. Well, that was a copybook try from the winger there, Pacoli. Pacari, as we saw him put the little chip over the top. He was running out of space and uh, really some super interlinking passes. There was always a man looping around. The communication was good. Just watch here as we see him loop around. Fullback Troyani makes the running. And in the end, seeing that he had little options and uh, he would have been watching that dead ball line looming up. And in the end, he makes a super dot down. Having the advantage of pace, of course, just helped him to get in front of uh, the Argentine player on that occasion. Good advantage played by the referee there. He indicated that there was a penalty to be awarded to Italy. And on that occasion, he allowed things to play on. And this time, it was Italy who benefited from it. Lovely record from Dominguez. Uh, that won't continue. Yes, in fact, the referee's given that over. Well, once again, it looked like that ball was swinging wide. But the scorecard will read conversion to Dominguez. It's an important kick for Italy because Argentina will need to score twice to get past them. Indiscipline continues for the men from South America. Front of the ball on that occasion. Con and then Gardner picks up on the inside. This is good running by Italy. They've got good support. There's men on the outside. Bob Don, Francescato. He's a lovely runner, is Francescato, taken on uh, by Giacardi. Well, this is a chance now for Italy. They go to score. This is great running by Italy. Maria De Rosa. And just when we were talking of Italy opening up the opportunities with their back line, they feel they've laid that platform and some two lovely tries in the space of a few minutes. Well, De Rosa there showing a clean pair of heels to the opposition as we saw Italy really champagne rugby there. Lovely interlinking forwards and backs and uh, just look at the crisp sidestep there. He comes in, he knows their support. Watch this tackle coming from Julian Gardner there. Over his head. And in the end, it's the little man, De Rosa, who scurries through. He'll be delighted with that try, will he? He hasn't had much work this afternoon. And how nice to score a try out there in this vital encounter between these two sides. Well, suddenly Italy have leapfrogged to 24 points. Just shows you what a difference it makes if you can score tries. Dominguez uh, off the upright. Well, the first miss for the fly half from Italy. Restart coming from Arbizu, that's gone too deep. Back for Dominguez. Martin Tiran and Gerardo. Some real aimless kicking from Gerardo. He really hasn't uh, sought to kick tactically into space at all. Well, Gerardo, normally so solid on the counter-attack, uh, really hasn't proved his worth this afternoon. The territory speaks for itself there. Argentina seem to have dominated the territory, yet can't score the points. Second half, Italy all over them. Yanez in the front. Can Argentina get some pace going in that back line? There's plenty of numbers. This is Arpizu coming through. Diego Cuesta Silva. Pressures on Troni, but he takes well. He's a big, tall man, is Troni. Well, back it comes, and once again, Argentina have to turn back and chase. Gerardo, aimless kick again from him. This is Dominguez. Now, Dominguez will want to open up here because there's players are plenty on the outside. Try scorer, Paolo Vaccari. 
taken by Jurado. Over anxious moments for Italy there as they sensed they were in another attacking position. And the referee just indicating that uh, they were going over the top and preventing the ball from coming out. Sile guilty of not kicking out. This is Vakari. Huge punt downfield from him. Well, Italy will be comfortable with that. It's a 22 dropout for Argentina and difficult for them to kick distance into the wind. Lovely deep hanging kick. Pedro Spolida gets there early, but Italy have uh, that advantage. Dominguez kicking with accuracy again. Martin Tiran. Players really guilty of not uh, finding their touches when they've when they've sought them. Luigi Trani was not looking for touch, just to kick downfield. And really, Argentina having forwards are having to turn around and go back on so many occasions. And as you say that, the Argentinian forwards' uh, heads suddenly hanging a little low. They're doing a lot of walking, a lot of turning and watching this almost ping-pong game going on above their heads. Dominguez, you'll want to run with that. Good play by him. Well, not too much space there for try scorer at Jarosa. Who himself has played at fullback before as well. So Italian, Italy's last line of defence with Troni at the back is well served by the left wing too. Dominguez, Krista Silva didn't manage to take cleanly. Well, that ball stayed in field uh, from the first kick and then eventually rolled out. There really has been an enormous amount of aimless kicking, uh, in particular from Argentina. That's the scoreline. 20 minutes, Argentina have got to get themselves back into this game and one senses they'll need to start scoring tries. That's a tap of the outside arm by Italy. The big Julian Gardner launched himself at the back of the line out there and uh, quite clearly using the inside arm and that's another penalizable offence in the line outs. Well, Argentina have decided that uh, a launch on the Italian goal line is what they need. Not kicking goals. Spolida. Too much lateral movement from Argentina. Today, long pass on the outside to Arbizu. Tiran can't collect, and then Salvat tries to repair the damage. Well, there was no chance of that ball coming out. Argentina were going forward, hence they have the scrum. Francescato. Lovely sidestepping that we've seen today from the Italian center. Crescell with a put in for Argentina. Well, Troncon of Italy there was the man that jumped up. And uh, Italy have the advantage. Now, once again, Dominguez with that huge boot of his. Tiran and Gerardo get into a little bit of a mix-up. 
Now this is maybe what uh, Argentina need, is some players switching and doing a little bit of interrunning and interplaying. Well, Argentina perhaps needs some sort of catalyst now to get themselves back into the game. One senses that uh, Martin Tiran was trying to be that one there with uh, the run from that long, deep kick. But there's a lack of imagination and creativity in the South American team. It's all Italy. They've used their opportunities well. They've hurried the Argentines into mistakes. And there's been far too much lateral movement from Argentina. Italy have sought to go straight forward when they can, despite the fact that they haven't dominated the important phases of this match. Certainly not in statistical terms. Crescell with a put in for Argentina. Mendes with a hooking foot. Sile. Arbizu, Gerardo gets into the back line. He hasn't been in on occasions. And then Sebastian Salvat running beautifully off the ball. He'll certainly want quicker support than that, Sebastian Salvat. But he has another chance for Argentina. Once again, choosing to play close. Mix up at the back. Arbizu. Italy have kept their defence very well organised. Only the men that need to go in are in there. The rest is spread out across the field. Sile to Mendes. There's a wall of resistance from the Azuri. Gerardo tries to make something of it. Getting across that advantage line is so important for Argentina. Well, eventually... The Italians had to perhaps fold in defence, but they were in an offside position. And uh, that's Stefano Bordon down. He's that big, strong centre from Italy. Well, we saw some very, very fine attacking play by the Argentinians there. And again, Sebastian Salvat popping that ball under arm, one arm on the ball. And in the vital circumstances of going to ground, unable to get a pass away. And he should know better than that. He's got a lot of support coming up from his forwards. They've proved today that there's always going to be an Argentinian in support. But on that occasion, really not making use of the opportunity. After possibly deciding some minutes ago that uh, penalties close to the poles, that they would run it and try and attack the Italian goal line because they trail by 12 points. There's enough time for them maybe to convert the kicks that come their way mixed fortunes for Jose Sile but that's a better kick from him all those kicks while uh, just uh, racking up Argentina's score a little will give their forwards time to regroup take a breather they're certainly playing with a lot of guts and fire out there and uh, a lot of them have played all three games in this tournament and will certainly be feeling the effects of it. Dominguez's deep restart. That's the experience of Diego Cuesta Silva. Quick throw in by Italy. That was good thinking by them. Now Dominguez, can they make something of this? Long pass on the outside. Paolo Vicari, Dominguez, Julian Gardner. Riffy waiting for advantage to go Argentina's way. Sadly for Argentina on that occasion, they lacked men in support. And uh, their attack would only have been met by two or three forwards, Italian forwards standing out wide in the positions of centers and wings. If there is to be kicking from their side, it needs to be tactical. There's space behind the Italian back line. Sile choosing to go long. But the Italian defence lying so shallow, 
the fullback pretty far back there might just have been opportunities for a little bit of creativity and perhaps some chip kicks into space from Argentina Jose Sile has not had a great game for them well it's saying that uh, young Sile hasn't really played well this afternoon I must say that uh, young Kreschel his support his crisp passes that we've seen from him really have been a little bit lackadaisical and they really haven't found him much space Italy have looked a team that really want to win today and you've got to give them credit for that some pinpoint kicking from Dominguez this is Gerardo well, so few men from the Argentine coming back to support the ball catcher so counter-attacks are have been uh, in short supply That's the man from the jockey club, Rodrigo Crescel. Lots of passes from uh, the Argentinian scrum half, but they haven't really gone out to the back line. It's been mainly to forwards, Rolando Martin and his fellow loose forwards just driving forward. Well, Diego Cuesta Silva must feel that he's uh, almost been like a fullback today with the amount of kicking that he's done. Carlo Olandi of Argentina. That's Herman Yanez, but it was well taken there by Padroni for Italy. Oh, suddenly pops out on Argentine side. Well, this is great ball for them. Spolido. Once again, the ball coming out very, very scraggly. Taken on by Santa Marina. Perhaps a little sense of urgency coming into the Argentine side. Arbizu sneaks through a gap. This is Arbizu. Great running by him. Support coming from Gerardo. Can they make something of this? Mendez. Sile. Sile running wide. Inside. Is that a try to Matias Corral? Well, eventually it's Argentina that score a try in the second half. They've uh, they've threatened on two or three occasions, but that time they finally put the finishing touches to a very, very good move. Just watch little Abizu here. In fact, that's their little fly half who shoots around the blind side. Silly, and look for the big prop forward who comes in as support there. Super to see big Mateus Corral. And uh, he certainly got through a lot of work this afternoon, as have... Uh, his other prop for partner Noriega. Lovely little pass in there. No one's going to stop that big man with five meters to go. Four points the difference, so we don't need to tell you the importance of this conversion for Sile. General record good, but not great today. Well, that's straightened up from Sile. That's a hairline miss. So four points are the difference then. Italy lead by 24 points to 20. Just 10 minutes left of this match. Try scorer Matthias Corral. Remember, it was victory that was stolen from the Argentinians by Western Samoa. They too, uh, the Argentinians had a commendable lead of 20 odd. 3 to 12 and uh, in the end losing to uh, Western Samoan. They'll look to reverse that today. Must remember that they uh, performed well against England as well did Argentina. Huge punt there from uh, Luigi Trani. Argentina, of course, getting lots of possession, which uh, which they've lost. We've seen that perhaps with a little bit of over-elaboration from, uh, in particular, the three loose forwards. Well taken there by Troncon. 
little man but very nuggety scrum off well that little statistic yeah showing you the possession that was lost that means in fact that uh, argentina gave possession away to italy 34 times and that certainly makes for tiring stuff out there when you're defending on occasions where you should have the ball for attack Sile. Oh, well, there's been wayward kicking from Argentina, and Luigi Torani has not really been tested at the back. Italy's uh, dominance to, uh, possession wise in the second half has diminished as the half has continued. Argentina have started coming back into the game. That's good running by them now. He has a chance for you, Diego Cuesta Silva. There's not enough players close in in support. Mendes can't take, nor can Christian Vil. The ball didn't go forward though, so he has another chance for them. But if Mendes had looked to his left, he would have seen a swarm of blue and white jerseys. Noriega. Quick take by Argentina. They don't worry about the penalty. Back inside, long pass to Gerardo. Has Gerardo got the legs and the pass? Back inside, and they've just held up short. Well, that's positive play from Argentina, Tony. Far more positive play, and uh, the young fly-off, Silly there, he, he didn't realize that he had a great deal of support outside him. And just have a look here as we see Argentina struggle to get to that try line. And Derek Bevan, well, he's jumping up and down and sticking his flag up and putting it down, and uh, all in the excitement of the afternoon. Well, any man not standing in the line-out has got to retreat 10 meters, and Argentina, once again... A, some, a silly little error from them. Well, Dominguez, and now the silly little error comes from Italy because one of the Italians was standing in front of the kicker. Italy might rue the, that particular situation because he has a chance now for Cresciel and his uh, pack of forwards pick up at the back by Santa Marina Italy did well there they scragged him and then seemingly have taken away possession but it's Christian Veal that comes away now can they spread it wide Sile going inside Sile is going to score for Argentina and that was poor defense from the Italians well the little fly half has threatened in the last five or so minutes he made a super break just now, which resulted in their first try in the second half, and uh, there he proves that he's a nifty little player, and he'll be uh, he'll be happy to get his name on the try scoring list. Just have a look here. Lots of support from the Argentinians looping around, and for the first time we see the Italian defence just opening up, and that big forward Shalon just not able to make the counting tackle for Italy. They've defended so well in this match, have Italy, and right now at the moment critique, they have found wanting. But full marks to Sile too, hasn't had an impressive match, but just when the occasion has demanded it, he's uh, popped up with some magic. Easy kick for a man of his standards. Has he struck that well enough? No, it's gone past. Well, Italy stay in the race then. Well, in all honesty, Gavin, that one looked to me to uh, certainly gone over the crossbar when one compares it to the first kick of uh, Dominguez in the first half. And that may well uh, change the result later on. Argentina will want to build on these last couple of minutes of very positive play from them and not get negative that Sile's punt Triani now he looks to counter attack but where are the players in support
Argentina uh, were offside. Dominguez is right up there. Now, will he punt for the corner flag? The advantage of the throw-in of the line-out will belong to the Azuri. Argentina playing that ball from an offside position. Well, both sides require urgency now in these last few minutes of the match. That's Christian Phil. Sile can't take the pass just above his head. Recovers well, does uh, Jose Sile. Well, this is going to be a try for Diego Dominguez. And, well, can you believe it? Great anticipation from the Italian uh, fly half. And Argentina guilty of not clearing the ball from their 22 when they had the opportunity. Christian Veal came away. And they looked to run it. But just watch how quickly Diego Dominguez takes that pass. Everybody stood quite stunned. The referee said, play on. Oh, a quite incredible finish to what has been a rather average game today. Plenty of excitement. Dominguez, he's had an excellent match. A try, a conversion, a conversion to come, and the three penalty goals. No hurry for the Italian fly half. Important kick for them. He struck it well as Dominguez. That's a great kick. Well, now the Italian flags are flying up now. Just have a look at the linesman in the background with his flag up. But the referee said play on and Dominguez took the opportunity. Arpizu's kick well fielded by Petroni. Dominguez is brutal coming to play now. He'll just want to chase them back. Gerardo has this positive play from Argentina come too late for the South Americans. Rolando Martin who's had a quiet second half. Vicio Mendes that went in and then just look at the tackles, telling tackles from Italy. Arbizu switched to Diego Cuesta Silva. Argentina have had lateral movement for most of this match and uh, have not bridged that advantage line of Italy. Well, that will not be too much bother for Italy as the minutes tick away. 31 points to 25 they lead. So that difference is six points. And Argentina know that they require a goal to win this match. Kicking is not always going to serve purpose, particularly if it doesn't go out. That's Vicario. A massive punt from him downfield. Well, it's those punts that have really taken the heart out of the Argentine scrum, Argentine pack of forwards. They've had to turn and go back so often in this match. Arbizu, nice big drop from him, but it's only Pedro Spoleta there. The rest of the Argentine pack are slow in getting forward. Francon, Dominguez. Good performance today from the Italian fly half.
18 points out of the 31. That's a short kick for Argentina, but it didn't cross the line. Well, as many balls as uh, the Argentine have given away in open play, so they've won as well. So it's been a real day of mixed fortunes for them. Dominguez with a drop kick. Well, he'll not be too concerned about that because he just keeps plugging the Argentine back. And that's the end of the match then. Italy winning by 31 points to 25. And few people will realize the importance of this victory for the Azzurri. It was a bottom pool match and uh, neither team progresses from here. They will be going home, but a vitally important match for Italy because they're coming of age as a rugby nation. For the Argentine, one can only feel sorry for them because in all three matches, they've performed credibly. They've come very close uh, to upsetting certain teams. They played against England, Western Samoa, and uh, of course today against Italy.